everyone, Simon here, Solomon's Tales continue. Last one, ah, you know what happened. So, Solomon, uh, the first real night in the, his room, the music had gone on all night. He left his bathroom light on and was asleep, sort of, about five in the morning. He can hear, the music seems to stop, but then he can hear lots of voices and chatting and laughing and it's woken him up and he's like what on earth and he gets up he's all blurry eyed opens his door nothing on the balcony looks over the balcony and looks down and there's all the girls all eating again and chatting and laughing and mucking around but it seems to be more girls down there and he's like what on earth five in the morning of course, as soon as he peered over the top and looked down, the girls have spotted him like, oh, Simon, yeah, come on down, food. And he's like, oh, no, no. And why? He, he's like, oh, no. And he's gone back in, left his door open, just collapsed on the bed thinking, oh, no, and trying to go to sleep again. At least he hasn't got all this airplane noise. God going on circus at the airport today he's he's just full door open lights on bad move maybe it's five minutes later maybe it's 30 minutes later in come the girls into his room you know he's there he's just got a box of shorts on he's just half crashed on the bed two or three of the girls come in and they're like party mood and jump on the bed and they start they're sitting on his bed talking and sort of they just like moved into his room continuing chatting to themselves and he's like what it's just no nah. no <laughs> it's not good that's not a good environment to be in for you living in a room when there's all these girls all around in the rooms i mean he's whacked he has hardly slept and he's he's trying to sleep anyway, he, he does get to sleep but when he eventually wakes up at probably nine in the morning, he's, again, there's two girls in his bed, crashed in them silly pajamas again. And the door's wide open, and the door next door to their room's wide open, there's a couple of girls in there. And it's, there's food suddenly appeared in his room, and he wakes up to this smell, and he's like, what? And who, who are these girls, and what? It's just, it happens, honestly. If you put yourself in a block of apartments where those are the Thai girls, working girls are there living, if they can see a bigger space on a bed than in their room, they're sharing four or five in a room, and they may be sleeping on the floor, and suddenly there's a room next door with a guy, they're not interested in aerobics or anything like that. You know, they just see, look, there's a three foot strip on that double bed, that's more comfy than my floor and that door's open they're just going to come in and sleep there and Thai girls sleep they'll sleep through anything and it's like 9 in the morning or maybe even 10 and he's what there's food trays on his room and there's two girls in the room and he's like what on earth and, I mean he's seen this before and this is similar things but he can't believe it. He's like, what have I started? I've now got... It's like getting a couple of cats or dogs appearing at your stray dog coming in and living with you. He's like, no way. He tries to wake these girls up and they're like, nah, not having it. He thinks, oh, God. He's got nothing of value in his room. Remember, he's only got his rucksack and a few clothes and things. So there's not a problem there. Money's in the bank he's got his atm cards and money in his pocket and his phone that's it and he thinks oh anyway picks his phone up and he think he, he goes off in the shower has a shower throws some clothes on picks his phone up and there's a message from ning and it's hi where are you so it's like oh this is a guy gone and Solomon's like, oh my god. Then bring her here. <laughs> She'll walk into here and there's two girls in my room. It's like, this isn't good. Oh. 
and I can't get the girls out there fast asleep. And he thinks, oh, I'm not gonna answer it yet. I'm gonna go and get some breakfast. No, anyway, he just leaves the girls there, leaves the door open, off he goes. Just round the corner, along from Atlantic, loads of food. He's go around there, cross the road, there's a little um, cafe there. And the phone rang. And it's, yeah, so just around the corner, over the road, there's a cafe, bit better, more European choice as well, breakfast. So he heads over there and uh, actually has a fry up, uh, an English fry up, you know, sausage, egg, bacon, and all that. But he's, he's still like a zombie, still tired. That was a, a really bad night's sleep. And if that's going to continue night after night, that room's going to be no good. It, that's in his brain already. But he thinks, oh well, maybe it's just a one off. <laughs> hey, has breakfast. He knows uh, Frozen's going to turn up at lunchtime. So he's only got a few hours before she turns up. He's got that killer pool contest down in Soy 8 in the evening, in centre point. Ning, and he's thinking, well, hmm. Okay, he's got to see what she's up to. So he rings. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, hi. And the guy's gone, boyfriend's gone. And Solomon's like, well, now you've got the boyfriend back and you've seen him again. You and me can't really see each other as boyfriend, girlfriend. It's not fair. She's like, yeah, yeah, I understand, yeah. And straight away she's like, what are you doing? He says, I'm having breakfast. And she says, so, where? Tells her where. She says, oh, I'm, I'm back in my room in uh, Soy 4. And, he, and she says, the uh, boss said you've got a room. One of our, her rooms. And it's like, the bongo drums. She already knows where his room is. And he hasn't told her. But it was her who recommended them, so it's his own fault. She's like, yeah, you got a room? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm back and two months and got a bike, got a room. And I'm just up the end of your road on the other side having breakfast. She said, oh, I'll, I'll come and catch up. And he's like, okay, <laughs> okay. And he's, oh, I can't, he couldn't see. He, in his mind, it's like, she's got a boyfriend and she's fabulous, but it's not fair on the boyfriend. He doesn't want to be one of those like K, four or five guys and be her boyfriend. It just doesn't feel right, it's not fair. He's a decent guy, Solomon. He, he's got his morals and yeah, you can, yeah, I know, some of you smirk, laugh, but he's got some principles that he likes to stick to. Literally within two minutes, she's there. Bang, up she comes. Um, walking, no bike, nothing. Straight across the road, straight in. Throws her arms around Solomon, gives him a kiss, hi, sits down, orders food. <laughs> Doesn't matter, Thai, European, whatever, she's just hungry. She's just woke up as well, obviously. And they get shut in and uh, Solomon's like, so you and the guy are back together. She said, yeah, we fixed everything. Um, he's sending me money. He's coming back in three months. Uh, he's off on tour. And he's he's not giving her a load of money this time up front. He's going to send her money. So she hasn't got money for a big bike and another adventure straight away. <laughs> That's good. And she says, uh, sorry about Cambodia and that she had to go. Um, but she'd love to do it again. So I was like, well, yeah, it would be nice to do a bike trip together. We could be friends and do that. And she's like, yeah. Yeah, I understand. And he sort of said, I can't, you know, we can't really be boyfriend. And she's, yeah, okay. Then she starts asking him about his room and why he's got a room, why he'd actually took one there in Soy 2. And then he, exp he says, look, I've got to tell you what's happened one night. And he tells her about the previous night and the fact that there's still girls in his room. She just laughs and like, Oh, that's the normal, you know, the girls. She goes, I know all those girls. I, you know, I've, they, I drink in the bars where they work and they're my friends. And 
she says, as if she already knew, as if one of those girls had like bongo drums. We're in his room keeping an eye on him. <laughs> it could be. She's like, yeah, I already know. And yeah, they're, they're good girls and all this. And But no good for you as girlfriend. And now Ning's becoming protective of Solomon. And Solomon's like, I'm not after a girlfriend. You know, I'm. this year is to come to Asia to see if there's a possibility of work and stuff and maybe stay here. But Ning is like, now suddenly you've got Frozen on one side and Ning both looking out for Solomon. I mean, it's nice, but it could be, hamper him. If he did want a girlfriend, he'd have to pass, they, the girl would have to pass the Ning and Frozen test. And if you find yourself in, in this situation in, in Thailand, in an area where there's girls or... Th this is... This is the sort of thing that will happen to you. And it's not just Solomon. This probably happens to any guy that decides to stay a few months in anywhere in Thailand. The Thai people are so friendly, regardless of their job and the areas they're working and what they're doing. They are so friendly and they sort of, sort of protect you, look after you, guide you. Maybe there's an ulterior motive. Maybe there's a money. You know, maybe they'll borrow money off you or, or something. But now Solomon finds himself in a weird position, and he says that room is crazy. It's so noisy, and and then says to him, "Go back, see the boss. She has got rooms everywhere. She'll change your room." Solomon's like, "I'll try one more night," and then he's like, "Okay." And Solomon tells Ning, look, tonight I'm going to Soye, Frozen's coming, pool contest. And Ning's like, ah, oh, I'll come as well. And, uh, have a night out. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be Solomon's gang. You're soon going to have like five or six girls traipsing around with him. And he's going to become known as a, a pool hustler and... It'd be like the guy coming in with all the beautiful women on his arm. It'd be, it's the guy's dream. But, uh, uh, there we go. And time's flown by so quick again. Solomon, what a lucky guy. This could happen to any of you. Just take a few months holiday, drop into Patea, get a room and a bike for a few months, get chatting. It's all available, even in 2017, I'm sure. It's still the same. Friendly Thai people. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.